Hi, my name is Cami Kotler and I played Elizabeth on the Waltons and uh, we're going to be making a little video talking about The Foundling, which was the first episode of the Waltons TV series ever aired. I love Mary's acting here too. First of all, she's already so tall, right? She's, it's just the first season. So it's not that long since since the uh, homecoming, but she's just growing, right? And she's all legs here, and the dress has become too short. And this was frequently the case. Like we'd have wardrobe that we would outgrow, and we'd still keep wearing it until they managed to. I, I suppose it was intentional because Patricia Norris, the wardrobe mistress, was very talented. Um, but I love how she looks, and she looks so fretful and concerned about the the haunted house, and such a rule follower, yeah. How red my face is. It must have been hot that day. Or maybe I was getting a sunburn. This was all kind of pre-sunscreen. I have a slightly weird memory about that moment when um, when she runs out and meets the truck. And I it could be a, a false memory, but what I remember was some kind of conversation about why she would run towards him if she was hiding from him. Um, and that there was a discussion among the adults and the directors. Of how do you justify what happens next in the script? Which is she's standing out in front of the house she's hiding in. She's watching her daughter disappear down the road. She sees her husband coming and then she goes towards him. Um, and they, I, I remember that the adults deciding that the way they could justify the action was that she was distracting him from uh, Holly because Holly was too close by and, and he did, she didn't want him to find her. She's nicely lit in that scene with the light behind her. Things like that just take time, right? So, so when you make a TV show, every minute costs you a lot of money because you're paying everybody who's present. Um, and to take the extra time to arrange for a light to be set behind her so that it would, it would brighten her hair and create that slight aura around her. Those are all decisions that take time. If you go on to a feature film set, right, where they're making a big movie for the big screen, they might shoot two pages a day. So they'll spend 10 hours a day lighting and adjusting and carefully creating the images you see. But on a TV show like this, we had to finish an entire hour of television in about six to seven days. So there's a lot of pressure to move quickly and, and to complete scenes. Um, this interior is actually on the back lot, if I recall correctly. Um, they built this, this set for this event or for this episode, and the interior was real. Um, and it was dressed and it had interior features and we filmed inside of it. So that light you see there with that kind of bright light coming in, I think that might really be sunlight, um, which makes for a really dramatic look in this dark, spooky, shed-like old house. So many of these episodes, you know, I read them when they came to us, when they first released the script, you know, they come to the set and they pan them all out, have your name written on the front of it. Um, and I would typically read the whole thing, but I didn't always understand the whole thing. Like, I don't know what a, I didn't know what a throwback was. I kind of had a sense from context. And as a little kid, I wasn't always that interested in all this grown-up talking. Just notice the interesting choices the screenwriter's making here. Because he's not a bad man, right? Like he's sort of in the villain role, but he still cares about his wife and, and he leaves some money for her and he's just trying to do what he thinks is best based on his experience. Okay, now we're in the, in the living room set. So we spent a lot of time in this set. When we had to use the radio, um, there would be no audio, so we wouldn't hear anything. Um, but they would have to get electricity to it because of the light. Um, and there would always be a little notation in the bottom of the, of the call sheet to cue the prop man that it would have to be, I think they would say a practical, if something um, really had to function. So in this, in this scene here with this, um, in the living room, gathered around the radio, the interior light, that little lamp that's over uh, John Walton's head, and then the light and the radio are real. There's electricity flowing, so somebody on the electrician's crew had to wire them up, plug them in, make them work. But then all the other lights are coming either from uh, lights on stands or lights overhead in the, um, in the kind of catwalk that was just above the roof, the ceiling, sorry, just above the wall. 
So if you look at where Will's standing, if you go up like three feet, that wall just ends. Um, and the, above that is like a, a scaffolded walkway with additional lights. And so all the choices you see here in terms of shadows and lights, they're all intentional, done by Russ Meddy, the director of photography. And we are placed by the director. So he would say, okay, Michael, I'm going to have you sit here. Ralph, you're going to be in this chair. Cammie on Ralph's lap. Judy on the ottoman in front of Ralph. Um, Mary and Eric and David and John, you'll be on the floor. And there were these little round, like, uh, ottoman cushions that we often got to sit on on the floor. And then Ellen will be in this rocking chair and, and Will in the other. And then Richard, we're going to put you in the background at the, at the kitchen table. So that would be set up at the beginning. Um, and then very, it could have been in the script that Michael was, um, was making a ball of yarn, um, or it could have been something that, that just came, uh, that was just on set. Like maybe the set dresser put a, a satchel with some balls of yarn and Michael made the choice, oh, I know, we'll do this and I'll do it with Judy and invite her to participate in this activity. Or it could be something that the director wanted um, and, and ask the actresses to do intentionally. But it's a nice touch, yeah? So now we're listening to Edgar Bergen, um, who you may recall played, played Grandpa in the very first Waltons in The Homecoming. So we can't hear, there is no real audio playing because if there were audio, it would mess up the uh, soundtrack. So typically, they would just tell us to laugh, and we'd laugh. Sometimes there'd be somebody off camera like signaling, like, laugh now, laugh now. And then here, of course, the director drops out the audio so we can see the whole thing from Holly's point of view. The stairs go up to nothing. So both these actors are walking up the stairs, and then once they get to the landing and off, camera they'll just stop and then this scene would have been filmed on a different day probably um, in the girls bedroom which looks really blue so this is a lovely scene between Richard and Erica um, like I said Erica didn't act a lot a lot after this um, she doesn't have a big long list of credits like some folks who were guests on our show um, but inter interestingly enough, her, her daughter went on to become an actress, and her daughter is Emma uh, Hunton, who was on a show called Good Trouble, which I haven't seen, but my daughter has seen. So the girls' bedroom set was on the other side of the soundstage. It was actually the same set they used for the parents' room. They just changed the furniture and the decorations. But there was a little cluster of four sets all next to each other, all connected by that one hallway. Um, John Boy's room, the parents and the girls room, the bath bathroom and the boys room. This again is such a sweet scene between Richard and Erica. Um, and I know just how she was feeling because I've done scenes like that with Richard where he's just being really engaging. It's so easy to act off of somebody when they're when they're that compelling and you just look at them and they make you react, you know, because of how they're behaving. I um, mean, he does that very thing here, I think, with her because she begins so, so kind of sad and then just thoughtful. I um, mean, he's being so interesting. So I just want to point out, there's a lot of coverage. There are a lot of shots in this scene. They have that establishing shot of the bed with Holly and John Boy. And then they have um, an over the shoulder where we see a little piece of John Boy's shoulder and Holly. And then we have a point of view from her pointing up at him. And then we have an, a tight shot of Holly's face. So they had to do this scene, one, let's see, the master, one, the two over the shoulders, and then the two tight close-ups least five different setups. And then Holly gets it, right? It's that glorious moment of her figuring it out. Just so reminiscent of things like the Miracle Worker, right? Other magical moments. Thank you for watching this and I hope you found it 
fairly interesting. I know I found it kind of interesting and nostalgic to look back at this show and, and see what I could remember from back in the day. Um, if you're interested and want to see more things like this, you might want to click like or subscribe to the channel because that will let us know that you want us to keep doing this. 